Hey, I'm back to break down more tables from Zen Studios Pinball FX3, so let's get right to it. Infinity Gauntlet is a middle finger to anyone who thinks that Pinball FX is just about banging balls around, because it's much more than that. There's memorable events like destroying the word of God, and having the press and release functions of the flippers reversed. I'm glad that Zen Studios didn't go for true simulation because it allows them to program a lot of unique and trippy modes, like the table turning upside down. Try doing that in real life. Infinity Gauntlet also provides a true and fake wizard mode, depending on whether you complete all the missions or not, which allows pretty much anyone to see most of the features. The only things holding back the table are the mildly frustrating magnetic mini playfield and the extended chatter. Thanos. Mistress of Death sees how there are more people alive today than have ever died. As Fear itself is further proof that Zen Studios aren't afraid to titillate the hardcore audience. The difficulty of the missions comes from the strict time limits, or the limited amount of breakable balls you have to bash against the targets. Activating the goals is pretty easy though. Just knock the two targets and make a strong shot through the backward scoop. The anger battle is really good for building up points out of the bumpers. Once you've finished a mode, you need to knock out a cardboard cutout of the villain in order to complete the mission. There's several other memorable features like an extra playfield where you use a paddle to knock a floating hammer, a mech that occupies the table with really good hit detection, and a swoosh at the bottom that can even be boosted by the flippers during one of the stages. Avengers gives you the option to choose which ball you want to start with. Each ball has its own perks and can expedite the main objective which is to spell assemble. At first it seems a little too complicated, but don't worry because the table does a good job in guiding you where to go with the flashing lights, colored panels, and audio cues. Get over to Shield HQ to change Avengers. They'll even tell you when it's time to switch balls, which can be done by entering the right sinkhole. Choose your Avenger. The left middle lane is pretty hungry, so make sure you're lighting kickbacks and ball saves. The only issues are the mini playfields that can be a trouble to drain, and the dudes obstructing your view. I assume this was intentional, but still it's annoying. World War Hulk brings all the elements of a noob table together for a seamless experience. Ramps and orbits flow naturally throughout the landscape, sending you back as perfectly as you entered, and creates a fluid rhythm that everyone can appreciate. The four main missions can be accessed by slamming the cage five times and choosing one with the flipper. They aren't difficult, but they aren't a pushover either. Evacuating Manhattan is a fun distraction, and starting this mode a second or third time adds an extra ball, making high scores even easier. Multi-ball modes are activated by spelling Strength or Sakar Ship. Everything is marked clearly so you know what shots to go for, and there's even a bonus playfield with subtle chanting that tells you to go kill people. These four tables are part of Avengers Chronicle Pack, and showcase Zen Studio's finest work. Awesome. The strangest thing about Doctor Strange is how the modes are selected. There's four pairs of panels that open up different colored sinkholes. Each of these activate a different two-part mission, which essentially means eight missions. Pain. I must send my astral form. Some of them are tough, but none of them are particularly memorable, except maybe the portals. And it's hard to see which ramps are lit. Looks more like a subtle particle effect unless I'm supposed to be seeing ultraviolet. The mini play field is nice, and the wizard mode takes a while to get to. Doctor Strange is a good table, but don't expect anything too strange, that's all. Fantastic Four is a great way to experience a foursome if you haven't done so already. Ride the elevator up to the top of the building to light the mission sinkhole. There's five standardized missions that are pretty easy. The most difficult moments are at the beginning of the challenges, which include getting the chick's force field going and hitting the spinner to prevent the temperature from dropping. Oh, yeah! There's plenty of multi-ball opportunities and even a secret play field behind the building I almost missed. Mr. Fantastic takes way too long to grab my balls from the outlanes. I got it! And the rinse and repeat rhythm can get a bit repetitive. Let's attack him with his own power! I remember Captain America mostly for the mission where ooze pours out onto the table and slows down your balls. That and the embarrassing bonus game where you have to block the incoming micro balls with your little trash can lid. When you launch the ball, make sure you get the skill shot and then hit a ramp so you can free Bucky. If not, you might forget to complete some of the side missions and be denied the wizard mode after completing all the main goals. The coolest thing about Captain America is that his table's pretty easy. Civil War is a bit confusing at first, so pay attention. You start with the option to play a two-ball multi-ball that will determine your starting score. Your high score in this mode will always be your starting amount, so you don't need to keep replaying it once you're happy with your total. 
The real game begins with you choosing a side. Iron Man is for the Registration Act, and Captain America is against it. The playfield has some tricky shots, including an upper level with two additional flippers that makes for an impressive showing. The main goal is to make combos and convert eight superheroes to allies. This causes your ball to get possessed or something. Spider Woman has gone rogue and joined with Captain America. The rails lead out to a slingshot instead of the inlanes, which is a total mind rape. Civil War's political theme is relatable, and I always laugh when the reporter mentions an elementary school. Near an elementary school resulted in a monstrous explosion. The Venom is an especially unique table with its two tier play fields, unusual ball saves, and maze like paths. Noobs usually get stuck on the bottom half hitting the suit targets over and over again because they can't hit the rotating lights in order. But once you've learned how to negotiate the narrow ramps to the upper play fields, you can lock a save ball behind the gum targets. Spell Carnage to access an extra stage where you can play vertically, but there still isn't much flow. You can also save a ball in the outlanes by nudging the table inward just before the gate. There's quite a bit to discover about Venom, but it's pretty much made for boss players only. Deadpool is one of the cringiest characters I ever heard of in my life. So much that I have to mute the table in order to play. He's so annoying! It's really a shame because it seems pretty fun. Shots are risky and the outlines are hungry, so make sure you go for grabs and plan your shots. Multiball is fairly uncommon. There's also some gameplay elements I don't care for, like the ball stoppages, and others I enjoy, like the arm wrestling and shooting gallery. Lots of varied missions that are divided into separate issues, where the difficulty can be changed by performing additional shots. I'm glad I got to finally experience the Deadpool franchise, though. Now if someone asks me to watch a Deadpool movie with them, they get blocked. Do that again! One more time! I dare you! I didn't like Thor until I learned that hitting the launch button on the ice orbit will strike the ball with lightning, sending it flying through the playfield. Some of the missions require a bit of figuring out, so make sure you read the dot matrix display so you know which ramps to hit. One of the events has ice blocking the ramps, so you need to set your balls on fire by dipping them in lava. You can also activate bonus scoring, which works out nicely if you can get it right before you finish a battle. Thor asked me for a bit of a mental investment, but still respected my time. Thanks, Thor. Ghost Rider is an incredibly unique table that gets everything right. There's a backflipping loop, a jump ramp, an oval race course, and a seesaw that changes the lanes and can lead you into the pit where you'll want to do an inward flip to lock your balls for multi-ball. You can claim a lot of jackpots in this mode, or you can light up villain and set your ball on fire to start a mission. There's four missions that you need to activate, but not necessarily complete if you want to see the final boss. Some of these events cause your ball and flipper to behave oddly. There's also a special challenge you can find in the villain sinkhole, where the dude throws the ball straight down at you and makes you bet whether you want to use a ball save or not. Yeah, it's a bet, but don't go censoring the table over it though. And you even get to shoot a gun for going down the wrong lane. Oh, and don't forget the video mode. X-Men is another tough table thanks to Magneto grabbing your balls all the time. Completing all the challenges and spelling X-Men requires skill and dedication from the most serious players. The ramp on the top right requires a deliberate shot, and will be blocked by the right flipper to punish any button mashers out there. The mini orbits are fast and require a quick reaction to nail the reflex shot. There's lots of two ball where you need to alternate between making ramps and hitting the middle targets while keeping both balls in play. There's many objectives to complete, and objectives within those objectives, so X-Men should keep you occupied for a while. Moon Knight would have been a rather unremarkable table if it weren't for its unique art style. The monochromatic gray or silver really comes down to taste, but certainly makes the balls harder to see. I also don't appreciate the glowy multi-balls, probably because it makes things blurrier. Some extra features include a broken shooting gallery and an empty bonus playfield. By the way, I wish Zen would integrate these extra playfields more elegantly, like put them in the backboard or coming out of the ground instead of just warping to another screen. The rotating diorama in the corner is pretty cool, and the overall flow is good but expect some long drawn out play sessions as it's really easy to keep the ball up if you like that sort of thing. It's official. You've lost the election. Castle Storm has an open and inviting play field with its ramps and orbits specially placed so that you have to get used to dead flipping or flailing around like a spaz or whatever suits your style. Spell out words by hitting the ramps to enter the mission sinkhole to begin a mode. My favorite is Skyfall where you have the firewalls blocking the paths so you need to think a bit about how to get your ball to the top left flipper. 
There's also a nice variety of side missions to keep things interesting, like the Ballista and Shade Multiball. My biggest complaint is that the mini playfields come up too often, which leads to a lot of repeated and obnoxious flipping. It's also a bit tricky to get a good read on the ass when launching a ball. For the kingdom! Wild West Rampage is a table that requires controlled shots and less than frequent multi-balls. Unless you can reliably hit the captive ball four times or light up Rampage on the middle ramp. Shooting the sinkhole next to it will switch between spelling saloon and Rampage, and also changes which window the ball comes out of. Wild West starts to shine after about the 5 minute mark when you start completing the words and playing the missions. The train adds multiple extra play fields, and the quick draw holds the ball at the top of the flipper creating a serious sense of tension. This is one of those games I found more fun after reading the instructions. Fallout is another table that takes a while to get going, and comes alive when the lights go out and the multiballs start rolling. The play field is less busy, but the subtleties are there. The top flipper is pointed directly down and allows the ball to stand in place above it. It's a unique concept and not an oversight, I hope. You can also pick your skill points in the beginning or have a character generated for you. There's an in-game shop where you can upgrade equipment, increase your skill points, or even play an old school space shooter. If you don't want to be bothered reading about all the minutia of what the points do, don't worry. Just follow the blinking lights and you'll be rewarded kindly. But the excitement can certainly wind down, as one of the characters readily notes. So boring. Doom is a distinctive table in both aesthetics and gameplay. You start by choosing a difficulty. Picking Nightmare will prevent you from enabling kickbacks, ball saves, and extra balls, but awards 50% more points. You can shoot the captive balls to unlock more guns, and hold the launch button to open up the weapons wheel. The flipper buttons are also used to rotate the bumpers, making the play field even more kinetically engaging. The breakout style minigame is whatever, and I still don't like the enclosed whirlwind, but neither of them annoyed me enough to switch tables after several hours of play. There's a lot to do here, but it never feels overwhelming or invasive. Freedom. Skyrim could have been one of the best digital pinball tables, but then again, GameTestPlay.com could have been one of the best websites in the gaming industry. The main problem with Skyrim is the constant popping up of... is the constant popping up of... is the constant text pop... is the... This can cause you to hit a flipper and select an undesirable consequence, like leaving a battle with the dragon. They're also kinda ugly and hard to read. The RPG elements are overblown, and it can be a grind. I see what they were going for because this is Skyrim, but it's still never a table I'd want to play completely sober either. I like the musical ambience, and that can be said about all the Bethesda tables. But I really wish they'd quit reminding me of my inadequate Magicka. Don't have enough magicka. Attack from Mars is an ultra fast and reactive table that really lets you show off once you get your footing. The shots are nice and tend to throw your balls back quickly. You'll want to go for the center target if you're trying to take down the saucers and complete the main objective. But there's plenty of high score multi ball opportunities that fly around the table and create chaos. Keep in mind there are five additional goals to conquering Mars if you want to own the universe earn a super jackpot, activate super jets, complete Martian multi ball, finish total annihilation, and shoot a 5 way combo. I suggest focusing on getting a super jackpot from the 3 ball multi ball while the other missions fall into place. This table might actually be faster on Pinball FX3 than it is in real life, and I think that's a good thing. I really thought Black Rose was going to be a fun and unique experience once I first saw it. If you go about playing this table like you normally would most pinball machines, you're not going to last long. The big and empty playfield makes for some fast falls, and the outlanes are hungry. Once you realize that you should cradle the ball in the right flipper and go for broadside, you can master Black Rose fairly quickly. Even when it tells you to shoot the ramps or do something else, keep aiming for broadside. It's the safest shot on the table, and you really want to reap the rewards of double points or whatever event it decides to throw at you. Not to mention it's really easy to lose your ball coming out of the ramps or orbits. Remember those midsummer parties back in high school where someone slipped a roofie in your drink and you woke up to the sound of a pinball machine a block away at a local pizza place? Well that machine was Party Zone. It's a fun little game that's definitely worth a quick look, but even if you're a retro head, the experience can be a bit limited. Which isn't a problem if you want to look back with a fuzzy lens of nostalgia and remember it as the good times you had before realizing that everyone lied to you about college and told you to piss away your future down the sinkhole. I wish I had more to say about Party Zone. Oh yeah, I got a score of 333 million and reached a rank of 41 on my first try. 
The Getaway is a flashy table that's a sequel to designer Steve Ritchie's High Speed, which he based on a police chase in his Porsche 928. The most notable feature of this table is the supercharger that automatically spins your balls around really fast. It's pretty dazzling thanks to Zen Studio special effects. Some of the Williams tables have extra animations that are a distraction and are best turned off if you're chasing a high score. But in the getaway, the heat and the flame trails actually make the balls easier to see. Extra balls are common, and reaching red line mania isn't difficult. But the overall experience is pretty clutch. Don't forget to use the launch button to shift gears. The object of Junkyard is to collect different pieces of trash that combine together to start missions in the sewer sinkhole. You don't need to complete each of the four adventures to take on Bob in outer space, which is the wizard mode, but you'll collect more fireworks if you do, which boosts your score. Once you complete wizard mode, you don't need to recollect garbage, simply activate and play through each mission again. Junkyard is full of quirky toys and events like the toilet, a jalopy race, and a video mode where you throw toast at a dog, and a dangling testicle you can knock around and try to bypass for some good old multiball. Medieval Madness is an all-time classic that continues to get better with time. It's easy to figure out, the shots feel very physical and are satisfying to make, and it has a lot of charm. Smashing the ball at the castle really creates a sense that a peasant revolution is coming. Multiballs are there for activating if you want to smash the sidewall, and the trolls are a nice mix-up that keeps you on your feet ready to nudge the table if the balls come straight down. I have a lot of hours recorded with Medieval Madness, mostly because I played it on the Pinball Arcade. The Pinball FX3 version essentially offers three difficulty settings for the Williams tables. So if you want more of a challenge, don't forget to play Classic Mode and try the tournament settings. That's all for now. If you want to see more pinball videos on GameTestPlay.com, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that great stuff. But most importantly, share this video with your ugly friends on one of those stupid social networks.